childish pain Left inside the fury Speaking in language unknown Sensing the futility Halted and subtly clasping childish weight Saving the tension Unleashing the wiry limbs Scratching for some memory Remember the single fool's anatomy A teacher follows And also carefully with those last shallows Sitting watching those fragments From the outside, from the eye Without your punishment I'm wishing and hunting for you Painting an ornament for on a man's sake Losing a twice fortunate face A game of battle to game burns Lost, lost forever, forever lost Nothing is shot because the truth Is misinformation so much like abuse Loving is shot, he cut the truth His misinformation so much like abuse So, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Near Futurist TV. And later on, hopefully, we'll have a chat with Larissa, who are playing Sheffield with me next week. It's uh, something to look forward to very much. It's a night celebrating Susie, among other things. So, uh, yes, first of all, let's uh, get on and have some lovely new music from uh, the band Kalavi uh, from Wales, who are... are really quite excellent indeed so uh, let me put on their new track uh, Tempest for your enjoyment hopefully I'll get this right and you can hear this
turn my audio back on. That was Kelavi from Wales, who were uh, played my festival last year, and this year you can catch them in Yorkshire at uh, Goth Fe- Goth City, Goth Festival City Leeds. No, Goth City Festival in Leeds. Uh, we'll be playing on at Wharf Chambers later on this year. Uh, I think they're really rather excellent. Played with them in. Wales at Pontypridd and uh, I was rather taken with them beforehand when uh, they were introduced to me we had a nice chat back then you have a look on YouTube for uh, night shift talks to Calavi or something along those lines um, let's have a band I'm playing with in London soon this is Down From Above Where Angels Fall You bring me life Ah, uh, the jiggery poker involved in all this. You give me strength to walk the wire. You bring me chains to break my fall. You show me truth. That gives me a heart You mystify, we sanctify This sacred love that we have found together We dare to tread where angels fall This liquid love will last as one
Right, I'm back, and look, there's a nice uh, photo of Down From Above. Don't they look fabulous? They are excellent, excellent live band, uh, obviously, or I wouldn't test them along. Uh, absolutely brilliant people as well, owners of many cats. Uh, definitely on the rock metal side of things with those goth touches. That's on the 28th of May in London so that's something to look forward to at the castle in London so uh, right I'm going to play another band that are playing with me on that date this is uh, Dead Blood Cells and this is Woman in White from them so let's have that
Right, hopefully I'm back on now, interrupting the end of a very good track indeed. So that was Dead Blood Cells. Again, I'm going to put up the uh, banner, hopefully, for uh, uh, my event there. Let's see if you can see that better there. I'll put it obscuring my lovely face for a moment. And, and thanks everyone in, in the chat. Uh, there's uh, Whisk82 liking Dead Blood Cells very much and Andrea MR 83 82 and 83 we've got consecutive uh, numbers there in the chat so uh, thanks for listening and enjoying both of you and thanks for saying that you enjoy my shows Whisk 82 I try my best to bring you some of the most interesting and exciting music around so talking of very interesting music. I'm going to play you someone who I'm playing with on Saturday in Leeds. Uh, it's, I suppose this counts as Guru Horny Badger. Uh, this is Marquisa Dark, Rachel Dark, your living dead girl. Uh, we're playing at the Fenton in Leeds on Saturday. So let's have a bit of that which i'll um take away my banner now so you can see me once again uh, it's difficult i've got so many things to fiddle with here it's it's very difficult you know uh right all being well i should now be able to present you with a bit of what should be basically what you'll experience on saturday in leeds right so let's fade into that and i'll shut up Yeah, but it's rotten and cannot be saved. 
Right, I'm back once again. So uh, I think I might tell you, because I don't want to just play music videos and things, let's let's have tell you a little bit about films I've seen recently. Uh, so uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So I'll pop an image on of that, why not? Uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the latest bit of Marvel production for your delectation or disapproval whatever something along those lines if you're not a marvel fan you're probably not going to like that or well, better get rid of that text that's saying um guru honey badger anyway yeah so um let's get that there right so doctor strange so if you've been following the story of um uh, marvel films so far you may know that um the Red Witch, uh, Scarlet Witch, sorry, not Red Witch, honestly, uh, has been going through some pretty hard times and has gone a little bit intense with her feelings due to the loss of her husband and her longing for having a family. So she kind of becomes a bit obsessed with that and kind of goes on a bit of a quest to or in some ways you can say to try and get that by retrieving uh, them from the multiverse and that's basically causing havoc which Doctor Strange wants to sort out uh, That's just, but she's basically going to prepare to destroy everything to have a family and that's, uh, that's I'm pretty bad things happening and you can really tell this is a Sam Raimi movie because there's there's elements of it that really really take from Evil Dead there's a moment where the Evil Dead cover is kind of recreated in a scene and there's kind of sort of deadite kind of things that happen in it uh, so it very much does that and I found it a really fun and enjoyable film myself because it's it, it's throwing in quite a lot of sort of Marvel fan service with the multiverse thing so you've been able to have things like characters that have previously been owned by uh, other companies that can now be in the Marvel cinematic universe and that's pretty fun so you'll get cameos from various people within the uh, overall Marvel thing. Yes, I can see how the film for some people would be maybe a little bit flawed. It's a bit chaotic. It doesn't really have a huge uh, story to it, but I liked the intensity of Elizabeth uh, Olsen as uh, Wanda Maximoff slash uh, Scarlet Witch. She, she's somewhat deranged, but the thing is she's an interesting villain, so to speak, because of the fact that she's not necessarily driven by evil motives, and that's, that's something I find kind of very interesting. You, you kind of understand her pain in many ways, and uh, it, so that makes her someone you almost root for in some ways but she is still doing things that are very very evil so uh, yeah i found it a fun roller coaster ride but i could imagine definitely it's a bit hectic for some people and uh, who knows maybe some people may object to the fact that it's a woman 
who is driven by a desire to have children or something like that i don't know but i think it's perfectly valid in this instance and there's some really creative touches such as when they kind of go on a journey through the multiverses there's various different aspects to who they are in those multiverses and the way the multiverses are such as one is made entirely out of paint uh, so it's really kind of fun in that it's imaginative i feel but it, it certainly proved quite a divisive one and it is very hectic and possibly a touch over long but even so rather enjoyed it myself as opposed to say moon knight which i found rather a trudge so that's my opinions on dr strange uh, i should probably play you some more music now so uh, what shall we have let's play someone who's playing my festival i know i've got some uh, other ones lying around here so uh, let me get you some more nice uh nice music uh let's see what we got in here um no i don't see any there where's my uh stuff gone that uh i i want that oh, there's there's some stuff uh let's see what should we have now um someone from my festival Let's have a bit of Leg Puppy, why not? So, Leg Puppy Black Light. Let's get that video on. And I'll show you.
Right, that was Leg Puppy, Black Light 15, and not just Black Light, as I had put there in the text. Uh, so, Leg Puppy are playing my festival in Cleethorpes. Cleethorpes, of all places, who would have thought such a thing? Uh, yeah, that's where I've decided to do a festival. Let's get that image up again of the uh, festival when I find where it is. Um, there it is. Yes, so we have, I believe... Uh, 12 bands playing let's see let's count them children on stun one zeitgeist zero two das fluff or i seem to recall they're pronounced differently to that das fluff or something like that so that's one two three four larissa or larissa byron it sets an excel that's five it's exciting this it's like uh, sesame street uh i've lost count now anyway john and holy braille Ghost Signals, Alexandria Corvin, Vigilance State, a Cat, Leg Puppy, Tantrum Zentrum. So that's uh, what we've got there. And it's £30, join the nightshift.uk, plus fees. So it's about £33 in total. Um, yeah, so that's that's that taken care of. Let's have... Uh, we've got Larissa joining us in just under 10 minutes. So what shall we have now? Shall we have... Um, uh, let's have some Das Fluff, I think. Das Fluff, Das Fluff, I'm not sure. Did I have them last time? I don't think so. Anyway, let's have them anyway. So uh, let me get that ready for you.
sorry, awkwardly back to me because I wasn't quite ready because I was busy f uh, fiddling with things. So uh, let's get rid of that uh, text there. So we're about five minutes from uh, Larissa now, somewhere in that region. Anyway, yes, so as I say, there's that festival. Again, I'll put that there once more. The snake festival, as I've called it, because I've decided to name it after the Helter Skelter snake thing that's there, because I thought it, it's a cool sounding name. You know, it's an attractive kind of thing. Massive risk for me, obviously, this one, but I just thought, you know, Whitby is becoming so expensive, as good as it is, we, we could do with a seaside goth festival that is a bit more affordable. So uh, how's everyone doing in the uh, the chat? I know Whisk82 liked WandaVision very much apparently and was very enticed by the idea of the paint universe. And uh, Whisk82 also rather liked uh, dead blood cells. So that's good to hear. Uh, yeah, so, uh, right, let's get rid of that and We'll move on to maybe I'll put a bit of Susie on actually. Uh, yes, so let's see what I can pop on from Susie because I'm doing an event for uh, in celebration of Susie, you see, on the 27th of May, which you may know her is her birthday. Let's see if I can give you a nice music video of hers to watch, but I'm not going to go for any of the obvious ones because you know that's that's far too simple. Let's go for something that's a little bit less well known because I mean I'm so sick of everyone obsessing over Juju. You know that, that's just like God, this looks really low quality. Uh, right, so oh well, you just have to put up with some low quality, I'm afraid. Uh, it's the principle of the thing. This is The Creature's Second Floor.
with Right, okay, should be back on now, that's better. That ended rather more abruptly than I thought. Look, you can see more of me now, isn't that exciting? Um, I'm told by Larissa that they will be due in any second, so uh, in the meantime, let's uh, see if we can tell you any information about them, uh, because I can tell you that they are Leeds-based and they described themselves as a dark wave duo making spooky synth pop in a dim little attic in Leeds. They've been on BBC Introducing and they uh, released their first EP Control in 2016 through Bandcamp on limited DIY cassette. What is it with the D cassettes these days? That was a solo project, Larissa, Larissa Drojd, I assume it is pronounced, I'm guessing there, Vocals and Synth, was uh, featured on BBC Introducing in West Yorkshire, performing in a live session and interview back then. So this interview chat will undoubtedly be something of a repeat of that, but, you know, not everyone has seen that, so, um, uh, you know, where it's a good idea to introduce my audience to Larissa. Uh, so, inspired by post-punk 80s nostalgia, and uh, it makes for a really unique dark sound that I can't get enough of, as says Emily Pilbean, BBC Introducing. It'd be nice if BBC Introducing would play me one day. Uh, you know, I will surely be good enough for that, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, they're, they're very, very good. Apparently, they went down really, really well on Infest. Oh, and by the way, Whisk82 uh, said that uh, Das Fluff rocks that das fluff rocks that's a uh, nice seeing das fluff so if you do like the music you hear please pop along to some of the events as i say we have i say as i say a lot but you know it's just one of those handy turns of phrase um yeah i've got london on the 28th of may and sheffield on the 27th and now we should have uh, Tom Cuthbertson, maybe both of Larissa joining us. Let's see. Uh, hello. Hello, Larissa. Hopefully I can hear you now, but it's never guaranteed. But let me uh, just... Yeah, I, I, I can hear you. So that's a good thing. I can't hear me, but that's been the status quo for all of this. So, uh, uh, yeah, ho welcome to... Um, near futurist tv and horrendous sort of pun play on words type thing so yes so how are you this evening good thank you thank you so much for having us we're we're very excited yeah yeah, I, yeah I, we're good how are you I, i'm all right i've had a nice day out in york which is it's what everyone's really wanting to hear tonight obviously uh, so <laughs> I, i've been waffling on a about you from courtesy of the BBC description. So um, I suppose we should better get on and tell people about uh, Larissa, Larissa, Larissa. What I need to know exactly how it is said, you know. Um, I, I think it's just, well, yeah, La La Larissa. La La Larissa, yeah. <laughs> so it's actually my name. Um, and that's just because um, when I first started out, it was just me, it was just a one woman band. And then I obviously didn't have any imagination of, of what to call it. So we just went with Larissa. How um, delightfully then, creative. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I joined forces with Tom. And it's that thing of you change your name. If you change your name and like you can't change it again or you feel like it's wrong to change it again. So the next name that we would choose has to be the right one. And we just never got round to, or we could never find the one to agree on, or that the, we could never find one that fit what we do. You know, you, you kind of meet bands and you, or you see bands and you think, wow, that perfectly encapsulates what they are and what they do. Um, so we just stuck with it. Yeah, and I think it works. Yeah, yes. and it's a little bit different. Um, yeah. Yeah, and why not? I mean, when it comes to band names, I mean, it has to be said, my choice was probably very, very silly indeed. I'm naming uh, myself after a fiction, well, my band after a fictional character I created, you know, perhaps not not the best plan in the world, but hey, there you go, because everyone says you it's... 
sounds like an Irish pub band in name anyway <laughs> so uh, so that confuses people but anyway yes this isn't about John Dolben this is about Larissa Larissa did I pronounce your second name right though Drozd is it Drozd yeah Drozd Drozd I mean I I pondered if it was Drozd yeah with a no, no, it's, it's, it's Drozd yeah Drozd, Drozd. right yeah uh, anyway, yes, so uh, we need to get on and talk about the music. So why did you recruit Tom into your doings then? Um, I think I, we, like, I always played um, gigs and, and did them with like six or seven piece bands. And that was that felt really good. It felt really empowering. And, and that was just because I was one person doing it. And, you know, this like one woman doing it. Uh, doing everything and then I'd come off stage and I'd and I'd watch these six or seven piece bands and I always felt like it was missing something you know so before it was so I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with our setup um at all but oh we're, we're, I think you are because you've well I've seen you live so you know <laughs> yeah um but yeah I kind of program all the synths in and then do live synths on top. And before um, we got together, um, I would just program the beats in or, you know, use a, a drum machine uh, for it. And although it was, it had the sound that I wanted, it didn't have, I don't know, it didn't have the feeling. And when I was watching other bands play, I'd come off stage and then I'd watch, you know, these six, seven piece bands play. And I just felt really, you, you know what it's like you go on stage you've got all the adrenaline you come off and you just like yeah just absolutely it. and it was worse watching these bands afterwards because they were incredible and they were amazing but they had something they had something that I couldn't have or I didn't create and I wondered for ages what it was and I think it was the drums it was the live drums um and then I thought you know, because when you when you f see live drums, you you feel it like it's very much you know it's it's got that energy that energy that I really wanted. And typically, um, by most bands, they're too loud. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and and actually, it took us a while to get to where we are now, just because of like sound wise. Um, so you're from a very I think your influences are very industrial, quite heavy. Yeah. And then, so you almost brought that style of drumming across. And then I, <clears throat> in my head, I was used to electronics. So, you know, absolutely really prescriptive and really tight. Um, and we found like a halfway house now, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, uh, uh, Tom, tell us then about how it was for you joining this project and how it, what you were up to before you joined. Um, yeah, it was really exciting for me because I sort of trained as a drummer, like, you know, in my teens and, and stuff, and then I ended up becoming a sound engineer and being on the wrong side of the stage. I <clears> was <throat> just sound engineering for years, and um, I'd sort of given up playing the drums, I suppose. I just never really ever found time and then I met Larissa through my partner and she was like oh, I really want a drummer and I was like oh I'm a drummer <laughs> and then and that's it yeah. and then it was, so it was quite easy really and then <clears throat> yeah it was quite interesting starting up again and remembering how to play <laughs> um, but yeah it's just been like it's invaluable now as part of my life you know to have an outlet to you know go and Hit the drums have you got any that. particular influences in your drumming style <clears throat> any drumming heroes you've got um i think it's like you know the all the classics like john bonham everyone says that and neil pert and then like danny carey from tool um it's just a genius and I, i've listened to him over and over again constantly for years and it's just like i think it's part of who i am and i play and i probably sound more like a sort of progressive drummer than a than a drum machine i suppose um but larissa likes to try and make me play really fast yeah. um get those uh and the thing is with the drum machine you don't have such problems you know you just crank up the bpm knob on the drum machine and you're sorted whereas i need water and beer and <sighs> see this is this is why drummers suck obviously you know, just... I know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, I know, you, 
and drummers I mean they, they take the profits away you don't have to pay a drum machine that is true that's very true although I'm quite cheap like. oh, that's all right then <laughs> it, it, it's nice to know that you're cheap and easy then absolutely <laughs> that's my motto <laughs> excellent so uh, so why do it anyway why do music for both of you you know what on earth question. what on earth makes you think that it's a good idea which, it's not it's a terrible idea. it is <laughs> i mean as terrible. i've discovered for like the last 10 years it's a terrible idea so why why you want to go first <laughs> i could talk about it for a while but you can go first um do you know I, it, it's a question that i don't think it ever leaves in my mind why 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 am i doing this and especially when you know you get you go through that creative path of you know you create something and it's and you know it's like all that expression and it's a fabulous outlet and then you know you listen back to things that you're making and you think oh that's great and then you listen again and you think actually that's terrible what am i doing this is awful i'm making no money from this like it's not a career it's just you know what what am i doing and ultimately you are doing it for, for yourself aren't you um but i think it depends it depends what what day it is and what what mood i'm in uh, uh, how i can answer this question i think it's um yeah, I, I, I mean, think it'll never leave. It'll never leave me. Wanting to be in a band making music. Wanting to be in a band making music. And it's so much mm -hmm. more fun when, like, yeah. I mean, we did, so we did a, a show a few, well, I did a show about a, a month or so ago and I had to do it on my own because Tom had COVID and it took me back. And I was like, oh, this is not, it's not a nice feeling to kind of, just have the stage on your own although it's empowering don't get me wrong um and especially you know when you're sharing the stage with you know those bigger bands and you think you know i'm doing this i'm doing it on my own and i'm triggering things off and this is cool and you've got that aspect of it it's never the same as sharing a stage with somebody and bouncing off each other like you know your ideas and your thoughts and everything like that Anyway, I'll pass you over to Tom. <laughs> Poor Tom, who right. might eventually get a word in edgeways. Oh, no, no. Yeah, what the rest of it? I used, <laughs> I used to this, done, Tom. <laughs> I've, I've just always, music has always been, like, the main thing. It's like, never did sports at school, hated sports, hated anything to do with, like, didn't watch wrestling on telly, none of that sort of thing. It was always about music. Mm. It's like, and, and it follows you throughout your life as you grow and geographically wherever you go you'll always take music with you and however old you are you'll always find new music you'll always have memories of music that you're listening to at a certain time and then like to play it yourself i mean i don't know it's just something where you you're in like the flow of playing music and it's there's nothing else quite like it it's just a lot of fun and and then all you know the people you meet through doing it the community around it the friends you make that you'll have forever um i mean basically what do people who aren't doing music what do they do <laughs> what are they doing they must be really bored <laughs> apparently not bizarrely uh, and i think they're all sitting around drinking beer or something not that you'd ever feel, not that you'd ever do that. anything like that you know obviously. <laughs> um but yeah i mean, it can be difficult sometimes i mean, have you sort of had many moments where you've thought I can't take this anymore. I've got to stop this. Like after every gig or something, I know it, it almost gets to me that way, but it's it's difficult sometimes. But I mean, at least with you though, I mean, you've been going great guns, so successful and everything. I mean, look at all the massive gigs you've been doing and you're like, you play in Fest, BBC introducing, they won't touch me. <laughs> yeah, it's... But you know, I, I suck, and that you don't. But you know, oh, no. no, very interesting. We're really looking forward to our gig in Sheffield. It's going to be great. Yeah, yes. Awesome. More on uh, that yeah. later, everyone. Yeah, but uh, what was I going to say? What were we talking about? We're talking about uh, wanting to quit and so forth. Oh yeah. yes, I think the main thing is just like we're not teenagers anymore, and like we're busy. Like life is really difficult. Like just doing the stuff you need to do to like be, a, be an adult. Um, 
And What's then, this being um, an adult thing? I don't don't quite understand. It's overrated. That. If you haven't had to do it, don't. I start. look. I'm still playing dress up, and <laughs> I mean, I'm not f- seeing what I'm wearing down here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, we've all like, seen the sequin hot pants, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just that thing of like trying to fit it in with like being, you know, being an adult and having a job and all the other things that you know come on with yeah. it. And 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 then yeah, like wanting to quit is for me. It's often it's like before the gig, you've packed the car, all the drums in, and you're stressing out about getting there. Yeah, and you've got a setup, and it's like you get really sweaty setting everything up, and then you're like really nervous about starting to play and then and then you do a gig and then you feel great and then you're like oh, that's why i do it yeah but yeah definitely up until you start playing it's like why am i doing this and then when you realize i think for me it's afterwards <laughs> right yeah yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's uh, you know you get the buzz after and then and then maybe it sinks like the, to nothing doesn't it sometimes it sinks to nothing and it's that like say you've done it on the saturday and then the monday morning you back to the day job yeah everything is mon- and the thing is i often find like as soon as i get off stage it's like well everything's ordinary again now and what what was <laughs> yeah, the point of yeah, that yeah, yeah, everything totally was otherworldly on stage and fantastic but now what i don't know exactly. what to be off stage sometimes but sorry this is about yeah. you not me but you know <laughs> yeah no totally get that and i think we found lockdown and like the past couple of years really difficult because you didn't have that moment where you could go on stage so it was like what why are we doing this what is the point if you i think i think being on stage is the best bit about it yeah isn't it absolutely that and like recording and like finishing the recording and, and like, yeah and, and being happy with it yeah and yeah. and also i think what makes it worth it which is completely opposite to what you just ask i'm really sorry but i think what makes it worth no that's fine it's fine it's the way conversation goes you know (laughs) is when you have a a complete stranger reach out and say something really cool and that it's moved them in a certain way or you know i think that's that you kind of think yeah that's that's why even though you're doing it for yourself you think yeah that's why we're doing this it's so worth it Mm. In many ways, but in other ways, you want to give up quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we won't. Uh, we'll keep going. Yeah, and I think certainly, I mean, surely with, say, the success and so forth you seem to be getting, it must be inspiring to have so many people wanting you. I mean, uh, oh, and by the way, have you played Sheffield before? No. This no, is I... why another reason why we're really excited, because yeah. we've never... We've not done many places out of Leeds. We played Hull. Uh, yeah. Apparently, someone's looking forward to uh, uh, London. Uh, it oh. says Andy L D N eleven. Andy London, I assume. Uh, we're, uh, we're not. We're not playing London, but we want to play London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Love Larissa's music. Can't wait to see them play live in London. So oh, right. I guess that's just a general hope. Yeah. And, yeah. And, oh right, yes. We will yeah. try and come up. I think that's a, that's a, one of the other frustrating things, is like, because when COVID happened, we were just we just sort of got started properly. We just found out what we were doing, and we had quite a few good gigs. And then it just like obviously disappeared. And then there was like all this pressure to like, oh, do stuff online and you know put stuff out online and all that sort of thing. And then it, that pressure to like do stuff in a different way was quite like well it was just a lot of pressure and then we ended like we did some stuff but like not loads and then now we're trying to do more stuff and we would love to play london yeah we'd love to play everywhere and then it's that thing of like oh we've got jobs but like people like us we've got jobs it's like where are we going next all we can do is keep doing as much as we can in the time that we have and to be fair the time you know the amount of time we do have to dedicate to it in our lives isn't that much but like what we what we do put in we do seem to get yeah. something back out of it do you know what I mean so yeah it's definitely very worthwhile uh, a couple of more things I just want to ask what's the thing with cassette these days I mean you know it, it's it's an archaic format which was useless to begin with why on earth has it come back <laughs> you're young it's... folk you can tell I me mean, right because <laughs> it's retro and cool Retro is, it's, is it, no. retro isn't always cool though. It's sometimes it's just rubbish like cassettes are. Yeah, well, 
Like, I, I totally get it. I'm not even sure <laughs> about the vinyl thing either, really. But I, I mean, I'm I'm a bit guilty of of the cassette. Yeah, you I'm, not, the cassette. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. But and when, so when I was uh, starting the Larissa kind of project, and it was a bit more experiment experimental, and I think it was it was different in many ways because I think when you are when you don't have an audience whatsoever i think it's really interesting the music that you put out because it's really true to yourself but when you've got an audience you've got that in mind and it's 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 in your conscience but anyway that aside so when when i was larissa just on on my own i decided to to release a cassette and that was purely because it was really easy and really DIY to do like myself and just like cheap and easy to just get it out there, um, you know. But I think the there is a well, I don't know what cassettes like now, but like a, a, like I'm talking about five years ago, there was a big resurgence of it, and yeah, I think it's because yeah. you know it's that it's that tangible thing that you know is completely away from streaming yeah, yeah, yeah and you know you can open it and it, it's like it's it like some the, work and like, yeah you've got that whole process you own it. it you own it somewhere. you own it somewhere it's a physical tangible thing and yeah it's all about that it's like a mini vinyl not a mini vinyl but it's that process of opening it and so what's it. wrong with cds I've got loads, and they're, they're all like here, <laughs> and they're all scratched, and like <laughs> none of them are in the right case. And every time you take them in the car, like they get a bit more scratched, yeah. and, and then yeah, but I, they do sound good. I think it's that thing of um, people wanting to go back a little yeah. bit, that nostalgic yeah uh, vibe. I mean, so at some point, CDs will be cool again. Yeah, they were. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> in 20 years or something. Yeah. Yeah. I say bring back the uh, eight track. That's what we really need. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to release a video collection on CED video disc, I think. Um, right. Anyway, I'll tell you more about that later, but my uh, love of obscure video formats shall be uh, left for another time, I think. <laughs> um, okay, so finally, uh, I'm forcing you to do at least one Susie cover, so can you tell us what it is that you've selected to do, if indeed you have managed to find the we time were, to figure out? Squir squirreled away last night, uh, working on... I mean, do you want to know what it is, or do you want it to, to be a surprise? Uh I've I've decided I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> I, the thing is, I, if I know, if I know, I know not to repeat it myself. So yeah. uh, right, okay. Do you want us to broadcast that live? Uh, yeah, yeah. It? I mean, I, oh, okay. it, it, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I mean, the thing is, people can then get excited. Oh, and by the way, Andy in the uh, chat said that Bodies was the best track of 2021. So I thought. Oh, you might amazing! Like. Thank you so much. I thought you might like to know that. But yes, anyway, back to the whole um, uh, nonsense that uh, of Susie cover that I'm trying to get you to do. We're Watch gonna, it. we're gonna do, definitely gonna do Cities and Dust. Cities and Dust, uh, right? You haven't um, done you haven't done that one, have you? <laughs> no, I mean I mean there's various ones I can do, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. just because that's like one of my favourite ones. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a we were we were talking about which which ones are in like our top three and that both we matched at that point and yeah. we're like right. I'm at least pleased there. it's not spellbound as that's far too obvious. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, and so that's the one we've that's the one. On. That's the yeah. one. Are you yeah. going to try and do more than one or just leave it at the one? It's going to be about time now, as we say. Yeah, like yeah. A, I mean, we'd, we'd love to do one more and we, we have like dabbled with it. Um, it just, you know, when your cover just doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's coming together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the other one that we were, we, we might do, it depends whether it comes together or not. Uh, is Happy House. Oh, that is uh, it's a, an excellent choice as well, I think. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, finally, the it's um, is it like the anniversary of? Yeah, it's Ian Curtis's death today. 
uh, the anniversary yeah. of. So, and rather coincidentally, you've done a rather fabulously different cover of Love Will Tear Us Apart. So tell us just briefly about that and then I'll let you get on with the rest of your evening. Okay. Uh, so that was brought on by, well, we always wanted to um, cover that, didn't we? Um, was there a competition on? There was a competition, yeah. But it's that thing of doing a cover where um, it's so daunting to do a cover because, you know, ev especially something as, like, I think that's quite a high profile. Like, it's quite, you know... So that's why I think we, when we did it, we thought, right, tear up everything you know about it, throw it away. What can we, what can you like remember from it and what can you bring out and pull out and how can we put that together again? But New Order had a, a competition and, and it was in lockdown and it was um, do your favorite New Order or Joy Division uh, cover and we'll post it. And we thought, do you know what? It's a perfect opportunity for us to actually do something while we're not not together in the same room because we can do something remotely and put it together that way. Um, so yeah, we we decided to go ahead with that. And uh, and I don't even know if we, we made it in time for the competition. No, I think we submit, submitted it or put it out like after the competition. After the competition. But it was still, I think it was that strange time where like lockdown started and like and everyone was just on the internet yeah the, everyone was on the internet and it was it was great because we i think we posted it on facebook and then it was like one night it just it just was flooded with comments from um it ha we had to translate all the comments because um there were a lot a lot of people that were commenting were from uh mexico mm. um and that was like amazing i was like oh my god like these <laughs> people are listening from from other countries and these are complete strangers and like we've obviously tapped into something here um and it's because it's one of those things where you know you do someone's favorite song or a well-known song that's recognizable um but it's like that thing of i mean we've done it once at a gig the headline gig that we had and i was just like oh tread carefully <laughs> because if there's any like super fans you can offend them it's so yeah. easy to offend someone so i, I was lucky was... in that i was there for its debut you were. performance oh, yeah, you were. You yeah. Were. absolutely yeah um and i think that's what we were really conscious of with the with the Susie sue on we were like oh obviously there's going to be people there that you know super fans or that absolutely love this song yes we both of the laugh. audience members will be <laughs> yeah and <laughs> and the thing is we were just like i oh, don't want to ruin it for anybody but you kind of got to let go of that and just think it's fine it's a celebration it's a celebration it and yeah and i'm sure it will be really welcomed has so. susie ever meant anything to you in the past or anything yeah for me i i think it's like Susie's been like a, a, a big inspiration, especially for just, just, it, just the, I'd say vocal wise, you know, incredible. And yeah, I mean, ev everything else like makeup wise, I mean, not, not that it's, not that it comes no. across at, at all. No, it doesn't just, hear on so either. Many levels. <laughs> <laughs> but on so many levels, yeah. It yeah, does. I mean, for me, like, uh, I'd have to be honest and say, no, not really. And like, you need me, to listen to Budgie's yeah, drums. Yeah, well, hang on, hang on, I'll get, there, need I'll get to, there. Need to, need to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> through having to do this, has, has like made me listen properly. And obviously, I recognise quite a few of the songs, but just having to listen, you know, to to sort of work on one of them has like actually been really enjoyable. And I've been listening to her whilst I've been working. Um, I'm really enjoying it. So it's like you know, it's, for me, it's a new. A new venture because like Larissa and I actually have quite different tastes in music. Like I'm not particularly a big like Joy Division or New Order fan. Really, I'm you know from quite a different yeah different side. totally different. <laughs> I, I think we are quite different. yeah. But but I think it works in in, in its own way. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, it's been nice to hugely looking forward to having you in Sheffield and thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, so obviously that is as people can see on the screen. Uh, is that 
the right way. Uh, yeah, there it is, just there on the screen for people. You can't see it, but I can. Uh, it's uh, 27th of May, which is Susie's 65th birthday. So, um, uh, yeah, happy we birthday. really look forward to it. And you look amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. And uh, we'll see you then. I'll play your Joy Division cover to play us out and I'll let you get on with the rest of your evening. So thank you, Larissa. And thank, thank you, you so Tom. Much. I can't wait thank to you have much. you for your debut performance in Sheffield. So thank you. I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. we go i'm back now so uh finish things off um i could sort of have some comment on my feelings on various things i can tell you excitingly it's now raining outside so i thought you might like to know that um i could do a nice pondering piece about the nature of performance and so forth i mean as i've often said with the track reflections a uh, 
it, in some ways often wonder kind of who I am in it, this sort of whole dressing up aesthetic and it, it's kind of difficult if you're not someone who really does any kind of sort of performing dressing up it can be kind of weird trying to figure out who you are in everything and I I don't know sometimes it just I, I look at myself and I don't even recognize who I am and I don't know it's it's one of those weird things and you know as Larissa said with performance so often you can be that amazing thing on stage and then you get off and then you kind of revert to yourself because you know your own mind too much and it's it's kind of weird that way that crash down I can kind of see why some musicians and so forth become alcoholics because there can be such a crash I mean like uh, someone remarked some people think I'm like really standoffish but I'm I'm not it's just I'm kind of shy and awkward in some ways I'll happily talk to anyone who talks to me but I'm, I really have trouble it can be difficult handing out flyers but you know I have trouble kind of uh, making sort of first contact it's so easy getting on stage though you see because then I I understand what's happening everything's within my control I, I know what is what everything makes perfect sense that way on stage I control the way things go and people come up to me I don't have to worry if it's okay to approach someone uh, with being on stage I'm allowed to do whatever I want there's already an agreed permission but in everyday social situations it just feels so much harder it's like I don't know if I'm allowed to talk to someone so to speak so if you are at a gig and you see me a, a, a gig in Manchester way back in 2013 said someone apparently told a friend that it was really weird that like I was this big kind of explosive monster on stage and then I got off stage and kind of stood by the toilets not talking to anyone the rest of the evening it wasn't that I didn't want to it's just I really wanted to but I kind of almost despite my flamboyance on stage I, I almost don't feel I'm worthy of doing that it's kind of stupid I suppose in some ways but uh, it's something I, I gain better at but you know even now kind of difficult uh, I'll, I'll finish with my cover of Love Will Tear Us Apart I think um, actually I, I've heard a good one by another artist no I'll do I'll finish mine finish with mine I mean it's so as I did on New Year's Eve when I was getting a bit tipsy and I was just having a bit of fun with the whole uh, sort of doing cover songs just for a laugh whilst in a suit so I'll play John Dorban doing a karaoke version of uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart. Come see John Oban this weekend in Leeds. At, uh, let me get that poster up again, just in case. Chances of anyone seeing it in time is probably minimal. Uh, but hey, uh, yeah, come see JDB at this. And then, uh, you know, you can come see Larissa in... In Sheffield, maybe I can bring them down to London one day, and of course there's a snake festival and that sort of thing coming on. So I'll uh, I'll get up the John o Band cover of Love Will Tear Us Apart now, and that will uh, do for this edition. So I'll be back next week with more. Probably do a Toya special, as I believe it's around her birthday then. So uh, we'll see. So thank you for joining me, everyone, and. Um, Hopefully, see you next week. I think I'll do this one in my own voice. I proved I could do it in Curtis. When routine bites hard and ambitions are low When resentment rides high but emotions won't grow And we're changing our ways, taking different roads Then love, love will tear us apart again 
love, love will tear us apart again. Through cold, turned away on your side. Is my timing that flawed? Our respect runs so dry. Yet there's still a appeal that we've kept through our lives. But love, love will tear us apart again. Love, love will tear us apart again. Cry out in your sleep, all my failings exposed. And there's a taste in my mouth as desperation takes hold. There's something so good, just can't function no more. But love, love will tear us apart again. Love, love will tear us apart again. The love, love will tear us apart again. Love, love will tear us apart again.